Hello and welcome to the next episode in our Aurora 4x uh, C Sharp um, tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to be going over the naval organization window as well as the mechanics behind it. This will be primarily for newer players and will be part of the newbie uh, starter playlist, uh, so feel free to get into that. A few things before we start off into the day that I do want to say. Um, is that uh, the reason that there was one less upload yesterday was because I've been dealing with some stuff in real life and also because um, I felt the quality, I had the video recorded uh, but it was late at night and I didn't feel the quality was good enough to be released to the channel and you guys deserve uh, as good as quality that I can do, as I, that I can possibly give. But uh, I digress, let's get right into the episode. So, in the last video, we went over uh, all of the economics tabs. Um, I did not go over research components, neither did I go over uh, class design uh, section. I will in a future video, but in this video, I'm going to be going over naval organization and the meanings, how it works, um, and all of that. I will not be diving deep into each individual mechanic, but I will be overviewing exactly what you need to know which is the goal of this series, uh, this playlist. So that newer players have what they need to know. They may not have all the deep mechanics and math behind everything, but they'll have what they need to know to be able to play the game. So I'm currently booted up in my Terran Federation uh, game, and I am, uh, you know, got all my naval organization. So there's a few things you want to be looking at, uh, you know, when thinking about your naval organization tree. Um, and the, there's various type of things. You have admin commands, you have fleets, and then you have subfleets. So admin commands are labeled in green, subfleets are labeled in blue, and normal fleets are labeled in yellow. Now this may change depending on if you have mods, but I'm doing this for vanilla, not to confuse anyone. Each admin command has access to multiple types of admin commands. Each type of admin command gives various bonuses to the fleets within that admin command and admin commands under said admin command. So, for example, I have naval admin commands which grant bonuses to uh, reactions and crew training and engineering and all of this stuff. It gives me bonuses to tactical situations. Admin commands will also apply the fleet commander assigned to them uh, their bonuses, the fleet commander's bonuses, two fleets under them and enemy commands under them. So they they mount it in in uh, a mul it's multiply and it gets diminishing as you have more hierarchy. You can add an admin command by going over here and clicking create admin command, and you can do update admin command accordingly if you want to update to patrol or update to navy. You can then create fleets under that, and fleets are what contain your ships uh, and uh, they are the things you give orders to using this screen. Um, and then subfleets are the things that go under them and they are purely for organization as well as combat uh, duties and uh, carrier uh, activities. Um, and as such, they are not able to be moved uh, with movement commands. So, uh, we have all of these. Now I'm going to go through a few more mechanics. You can just... In C sharp, dragging and dropping is basically what you want to be doing with everything. So if I drag drop here, I can move between here, move, move up. You can move back and forth. This is the same with admin commands. You put an admin command under here and under there. Now, you can't do this with fleets that are in different locations. They have to be in the same location for you to be able to move them as you're essentially, uh, you know, organizing them next to each other or moving them to be next to each other uh, automatically, kind of. So keep that in mind. Uh, over here, you can rename the fleet. You can del or subfleet or admin command. You can delete a uh, admin command subfleet or fleet. You can award a medal to a ship, uh, and then you can refresh over here if you need to. This uh, there is also one more kind of uh, subsection to admin commands, and that is the shipping line. Uh, shipping lines are civilian, and you cannot do anything uh, to them manually through here. Uh, instead, they act on their own and it allows you to see what ships each shipping line has. So over here, I have seven shipping lines and each of them has their own 
uh, respective um, their, their own respective uh, ships and you know what they're doing or oh, we're moving to Hoth Colony, we're going to Caprica, we're doing this, you know, all of that good stuff. So that is the types there. I'm now going to move on to the respective uh, mechanics behind each type and some of the tabs and stuff that goes with them. So, Ammon Commands cannot use fleet, obviously. They do not have a ship overview, they don't have ship combat, but they have Admin Command over here. Naval Headquarters is a building, and this is what this is, NHQ, that extends the radius at which your Admin Commands are effective. So, um, with Admin Command level 1, you're going to have a radius mod of 1 if you pick Navy, and that's going to give you a range of 1 system. So, you're able to do 1 system from where the naval headquarters is stationed, okay? Now, if I did patrol, I'd be able to do two. If I did survey, I'd be able to do two. So, keep that in mind. Um, and the more you build, the bigger distance you'll be able to get from them. Um, and it's all multiplicative with multiple uh, fleet commanders and commanders and admirals and all of that stuff. Uh, you then, uh, none of this works for that, but then you have orbital battle here. I'm now going to run through what fleets can do. So over here, this is a big part of the game. This is movement orders. And your ship list. So over here, you will see a summary of what the ships are, what they're doing, their fuel, their current speed, all of that. So currently, they're in Seoul orbiting Earth. They have no orders. Uh, this is their commander uh, of the ship I have selected here. So, um, so respectively. Uh, I have, uh, no, my bad, this is the fleet commander, my bad, this is the fleet commander, uh, this is the speed that they're going, this is the bonuses they have, uh, this is the, uh, protection value that they are giving, so, protection value, uh, is what planets need to be able to deal with unrest, I went over that in my last video, uh, which was on economic screen, so if you need to go through that, you can, uh, then it has no default orders, and then it shows what's in the fleet, respectively. Below, you'll have a list of all of the ships, uh, their ship, the ship name, the class of the ship, what the ship status is, so active sensors on, overhauling, etc. O equal overhauling, A equal active sensors on. How much fuel they have left, how much ammunition they have left, so for missiles, how much maintenance supplies they have left, what their shield uh, shields level is at, so 300 out of 500, etc. Deployment time, deployment time being the time uh, away from a population or a colony, um, and as such, they will accrue that, uh, you know, not being near a colony. Maintenance time, which is the time spent away from maintenance facilities um, or maintenance modules, which, uh, accrue or go up, and that will cause more maintenance failures the higher that goes, and you'll need to build around that. I'll get to that in the class design tutorial, uh, that I'm going to remake. There's already currently one, but I'm going to remake it in something better. Then we have morale, which is the morale of the, of the crew. Then we have the grades, uh, and training. Training, um, is like making sure they can't screw up when doing things while grade is more like they're proficient at their job the training is like base level trying to get them trained up into like a decent fighting force and then grade is like you know how actually elite are they so think of it like that and they give their respective bonuses you then have thermal signature which is the thermal signature um of the ships in question and that can be used to detect from sensors and then you have their commander You'll also notice down here there's a bunch of selections, but I'm not going to get into those right right now. Then we have movement orders. So you'll ha you'll I'm going to go from top to bottom. Over here you'll have system locations, auto route by system, and order templates. System locations allows you to see all locations in the system. Auto route allows you to quickly travel to another system without having to manually do it. So if I want to go here, I go here. Just double click. Then we have checkboxes of what you want to be able to see. So planets, dwarf planets, I want to see civilians, I want to see contact, I want to see fleets, I want to see all of that stuff. Uh, and you can check those on and off depending on what you want. 
Uh, then we have um, things that affect the orders. So what is an order? An order is something where you order the ship by clicking on the position you want it to do something to. So let's say Earth. And then just clicking again, refuel or resupply from colony. And then these will directly affect that. So auto include lag range points. This will mean they'll, they'll go through lag range points. And I, 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 uh, I suggest you go watch my video on lag range points if you want to know more. Check danger rating. That's to do with um, other alien races and stuff like that. Assume fleet is jump capable. That will assume the fleet is jump capable no matter what. Exclude alien controlled. Uh, cycle uh, moves. And then use maximum speed. Uh, so that cycle moves means they'll keep repeating the same move over and over again, or the same order over and over again. Uh, clear alien control means that they won't go near alien control places, and then use maximum speed will make sure they use their maximum ship speed or fleet speed. So whatever uh, ship, whatever ship uh, is the slowest, they'll use that speed uh, in the fleet. So fleet speed is always the lowest speed uh, of a single ship in the fleet. Okay. Then, as you'll see, we have all of these orders here. These allow you to do various things. There's a lot of orders. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, as that will take way too much time. But suffice it to say, they allow you to refuel, resupply. They allow you to move to location. They allow you to um, divide fleet into single ships. They allow you to provide auto environment, stuff like that. They provide you loads of different things that you can do. So that's movement orders. They are active orders that you use to tell your ship to do. Then we have what's called default orders or standing orders. And this is an order where they use conditions to set on if they'll do something. So no matter what happens, they will always try and serve the nearest body if I select this. Then if, the, if this order is not able to be done or completed, they'll fall back to the secondary order. So like that. Uh, the S and the A uh, stand for um, basically um active uh, and and uh sta standing and then uh, active orders so it's like for example if i move to asteroid mineral source it's going to move to asteroid mineral source but it's going to stay there it's not going to move off to somewhere else um and 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 it will complete that order accordingly until it's there and then it, and then it won't uh, matter anymore standing orders they'll always try and find new bodies to survey once the survey they'll be done so uh, that, that's kind of the, the, the deal with that. Then we have conditional orders. So these are conditions. So if my fleet ever goes below 50% fuel, I can tell it to refuel the colony. All here means all uh, in all systems. So uh, if you set it to non-all, it will only refuel from colonies in system as the, as the fleet that has the order. While um, if you use um, the all, it will go through systems to find a place to refuel. So that's useful for intergalactic surveying. And then you have a secondary one which works like this before. You can, you know, it goes sideways essentially. And they will do this first and then they'll do this if that happens. And that's standing orders. Then you have transported items, which is uh, things like uh, ground forces, um, Stuff like that, essentially. So if I go over to my troop transports, I don't have any in them right now, but basically this is where ground force and stuff will show up. History, it will show you the history of the ship. So I'm sure if I go over to my strike group, there we go, we can see what they did. Um, and we can and we can gain a gun and what happened with them. We then have miscellaneous, which will allow you to uh, move fleet to certain places. Um, it will allow you to reset text, display sensors on tactical map, just miss, miss stuff that isn't really that important for you. Okay, uh, now let's go up to over here. We've done our fleet tab, now let's move on to ship overview tab. I'm not going to touch on the ship combat by the way tab. This will be for my ship combat videos, so there's already one out, you can go and watch that, but don't worry about that. So ship overview, gives you the same kind of overview uh, as four up here. Then you have the design, so it will show you the design of the ship that's currently in service, same as the class design window. Then you'll have the class design display, your ordinance template. So basically how this works is um, 
I'm gonna go to, to one of my ships here. So this this is less for fleet and this is more for ship overview. So you don't need so like this won't show anything, right? But for movement orders. But if I go to ship overview, it will. So this is the current loadout, which is on board the ship. That's what is currently loaded in the missile tubes. This is the ship's template loadout, so the individual loadout, so that when you go and reload or rearm, it will load like that. And then this is the class template, so the what it will use if, if this isn't checked. These are all the missiles that you can have. This is show obsolete, so it'll show obsolete missiles. This is no missile size uh, restriction. And then you can you can double click what you want accordingly. So I want this, I want this, I want this, for example. Then you can rename missile obsolete, missile copy to class, copy to fleet uh, with all of these missiles, depending. And you can click on these accordingly. We transported items, as you can see, ordnance. Then we have armor status. Basically, this is four layers of armor. Each layer is spread out depending on the tech, but here we go. So four layers of armor has this. Damage control, it shows you a list of your components and if any of them are damaged. A ship will show up as red um, on the naval organization window if it is damaged or has an issue. Then we've got history, which is for fleet, so it's not shown here. Then we have miscellaneous, which allows you to abandon the ship, allows you to do external damage and internal damage. There are a bunch of Space Master stuff, but I'm going to do that in a separate video about Space Master. I think I've already done that, but yeah, um, keep that in mind. Then we have ship combat, I'm not going to go over that. I went over admin command, logistics support. So logistics support basically allows you to look at the fleet and allows you to... Um, it basically allows you to look at your empire, essentially. Um, it allows you to see everything to do with your ships and your current fuel issues and you know, where your fuel is, your ammunition, all of that stuff. Detailed fuel report, okay, I can, I can, I can see that. Uh, then I can have a look at my repair report for ships that need to be repaired. I can have a look at shipping lines that I select through here. And then order of battle, you can see all of your ships across your empire. And then we also have these buttons. You can award uh, another few things. And I think I didn't go over that. I really should have is you can, um, if you want to move a ship into a new fleet immediately, you can detach. You can also uh, delete ships, um, which will delete them completely. Um, uh, you can award them uh, medals to ships, obviously. Um, and then also fleet fire control, I, will, I, I go over that in the other video. You then have subfleets that accordingly. The subfleets, basically they could do uh, everything. Um, they're basically just for ship combat and for movement, moving things up and down uh, better. So don't worry about that too much. So again, go watch my ship come up with you if you need to. I'll link all of that stuff in the description. But we've pretty much gone over, from what I can see, uh, everything to do. Excuse me. Everything to do with uh, the uh, naval organization uh, and uh, all of the knobs and wheels. Now, I didn't go too deep into all of the mechanics of moving stuff around and stuff like this, but you'll get a hang with it. Best tips is drag and dropping. Uh, that use the touch a lot. Uh, organize your navy under admin commands. Uh, three layers, four layers, it's, it's whatever. Just don't go too overboard with it. Make sure to assign your admin commands and do stuff like that. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy the video. I'll see you next time. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. All the links will be in the description below. Please uh, remember if you do have a suggestion for another tutorial, do so, do so below. There's a link to a spreadsheet that you can input a suggestion you do have. I'll see I'll see you uh in a little bit and uh goodbye